had a passion for Hong Kong from watching Hong Kong movies when I was about 11 or 12. Yeah, I was introduced to the films of John Woo. And from that moment onwards, you know, Chang Fat, I had a Chang Fat poster on my wall as a teenager. I don't think there was that many kids in England who did that. Because they were really stories about fighting against injustice. What really drives me is this need to you know, stand up for the little man. You know, not let the bullies win. Fight injustice. That's what these kids are doing. I admire them. And that's why I wanted to tell their story. I wanted to make a genuine Hong Kong movie. You know, I, partly because I wanted, I loved Hong Kong movies so much and I wanted to kind of add to their canon. You know, it was kind of an ambition from when I was a kid. But also because I felt like you can't tell the Hong Kong story and then not tell it for Hong Kongers. It is their story. If I'm putting them on screen, then it must be for them. I didn't set out to make a dry or lecturing documentary. I set out to make a fun, enjoyable experience. Uh, but I also hope that they come away with hope that they have this new generation, these, new, these kids who are really risking it all to make life better for everybody in Hong Kong, but also to alert them to a need to be aware that what they hold dear about the city, its culture, its personality, its soul, is under threat. I didn't want to impose my view of the way things are. I wanted to um, have a, I wanted to tell the story, but allow space for the audience to interpret it. Uh, I didn't want to impose a, a point of view on them, but I hope that people will walk out of the cinema and feel proud that Hong Kong has spawned these two amazing kids, this generation of amazing kids. I got the idea to make this film because I, I, was, I was sat in a French cafe in Bucharest, Romania, at a, uh, I, w I was attending the uh, One World Human Rights Documentary Film Festival, and I was watching these really great films telling you know, compelling stories, important stories. But no one was telling the Hong Kong story. Sat in this cafe in Bucharest, it suddenly dawned on me that 2012 was going to be a special year. The chief executive election, which is on a five-year rotation, and the LegCo elections, which is on a four-year rotation, were going to coincide in the same year. And not only that, at the end of 2012, China's once in a decade transition of power was going to occur. So I knew setting out that something special was going to happen. But I had no idea that it was going to be quite as special as it was. So in 2009, in the height of the financial crisis, I decided it would be a really great idea to uh, quit my job <laughs> and, uh, and go and do a master's degree. And not in a useful subject, not in a business administration or something like that. No, no. Modern Chinese studies. And then focus on what even my tutors told me was a fairly pointless topic. Hong Kong's political future, essentially, is what I focused on. Pretty insane. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't a rash decision. It was essentially something that had been building up for a long time. Uh, I... Uh, you know, I'd, I'd had a fascination with Hong Kong since I was about 12. You know, watching John Woo's films, Ringo Lam's films, uh, you know, being a massive fan of Chai and Fat. These are the things that, you know, got me interested in Hong Kong. This film is not just something which I, I thought, oh, that might be interesting, let's go and uh, make a film on that. The film is kind of uh, a product of many years of interest and and care and passion for the place the, and the people and the culture. When we were shooting, I stayed in a subdivided flat in Sham Shui Po. But I remember staying in this flat on the ninth floor, which didn't, uh, in a building which didn't have a lift. And every day I'd lug heavy equipment up and down nine floors. And you know, you get to the bottom and you'd realize you'd left something upstairs. And you'd be like, oh, do I really need that? 
do I really want to go back up nine floors? And, uh, you know, it, it sort of added to uh, the hardship of making the film. Uh, you know, and we didn't have lots of money. You know, this film was funded by people in Hong Kong who were passionate about the topic. It wasn't, f I didn't have a broadcaster or uh, some funding organization from the West who, you know, who'd already come in on it. Um, so we really were up against it financially. And, you know, there was some, I remember one month filming in, in Hong Kong and, you know, I only had like about a hundred pounds to my name for the month. I had to make it last the entire time. So I really got familiar with congee joints in Sham Shui Po. Uh, you know, started off on beef congee. By the end of the month, it was just plain congee because I couldn't afford the beef anymore. It was really, uh, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel. It was that basic. It was really uh, financially a great strain. But, you know, I can look back at that with fond memories now. At the time, I wasn't so happy. <laughs> But I think, you know, it adds a layer of authenticity to the film.